What's going on guys? Welcome to the state of VR. It's been a while since I put out some new content for you guys and I think it's about time I came back and started speaking about a lot of what's going on in the VR industry. Especially what's been happening the last couple weeks in regards to the release of all of these brand new features for the Oculus Quest 2. Specifically, I want to talk about today being the Oculus Airlink feature. I want to talk about my experience so far with Airlink, how well the setup went for me, how the performance has been in games that I've tried out so far using it, and just my personal thoughts from being a longtime virtual desktop user and purveyor of trying to find the best solution when it comes to streaming PC VR content. All right, let's get started. Okay, first let's talk about some details regarding the version 28 release. This update has been slowly getting pushed out around the beginning of last week, and this one is meant to bring a lot of the infinite office features we expected to be released a long while back, and one surprising and really interesting new feature in the experimental release of the Oculus Airlink. This is pretty much Oculus's first attempt at PCVR wireless streaming. In a recent Twitter discussion between Boz and John Carmack, they kind of refer to Airlink as being something they're using to test the waters, as to whether this is something people will actually use a significant amount of time. Personally, I think this will be just that for a lot of people. A really big deal because of the vast library of Steam and Oculus Store content already available on the PC. So how many people actually have this update right now? Like a lot of Quest updates, it kind of takes a while to be actually activated by Oculus themselves, and this seems to be dependent upon the region of the world or country you live in. There have been some YouTubers, in particular Gamertag VR from the UK, that actually used a VPN in order to push the update to his headset ahead of time. Many people have already gotten the version 28 update since last week, but are just waiting on Oculus to activate it, which most should be good right about now. It always seems with headset updates like we're constantly waiting for updates to our updates. But you know, I'm a patient guy. So what is the setup like in regards to getting Airlink up and running? When you do have all the updates and everything is showing up as far as the Airlink toggle on your desktop application and on your Quest, you're pretty much good to go. Also, turning it on is almost identical to the process of turning on regularly. If you are having trouble getting this feature to show up, one tip for getting the Quest toggle to appear is by resetting the default settings in the experimental menu a couple of times. And if you are having trouble with the desktop application, try logging out and logging back in. That pretty much worked the first time for me. Okay, now let's move on to performance and how it compares to something like virtual desktop. Well, apparently for a lot of people, it's pretty much been all over the place as far as people's experience with the new feature. If you do get it up and running and start having issues, check out the Oculus debug tool. It's not too hard to find. Just go to your programs directory, click on the Oculus folder, then the support folder, and then the Oculus diagnostics folder. Then select and run as administrator the .exe file called Oculus debug tool. In the debug tool, make sure you change your video bitrate to zero. And that's pretty much it. That was the fix for me, and I didn't do anything other than that. But to get a better picture, you could also change the encoded resolution to 4000 if you want to try that out. I think the big difference between this and virtual desktop is the fact that with Airlink, the default quality setting allows you to dynamically adjust the bitrate based on your connection and whether or not stuttering occurs at your current setting. I love virtual desktop, but I could never really rely on it to play competitive shooters or seriously demanding games while streaming. With Airlink, when I do experience any stuttering, it's usually really early on and typically disappears the longer I'm in there. Airlink is just flat out awesome. It finally feels like a wireless solution that I will use on a regular basis, and a huge step up from using the TPCast connected to my Rift, which at the time cost like $350, literally more expensive than buying a Quest 2 right now. Alright guys, let me know if you enjoyed this quick discussion video, and tell me if you tried Airlink, and what your experience has been like so far. Once again, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more Let's Talks, VR news, and product reviews. Peace out VR dudes and dudettes.